Welcome back everyone, it's Sarah, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the TCA slash citric acid slash Krebs cycle. They're all the same things, I don't know why it has so many different names, probably just to confuse people. But anyways, this is a process that's going to take place in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells, it takes place in the cytoplasm slash cellular membranes of prokaryotic cells, and it is an aerobic process in which pyruvate is combined with some other molecules and carbon dioxide is re released two molecules of ATP are formed and it's also going to form a bunch of other intermediates that are used in other biochemical pathways so this is a very very important pathway in cells you can create fatty acids and amino acids and a bunch of other things from the intermediates you get from this cycle. So before you actually enter this cycle you have to take pyruvate from glycolysis and you have to break it down into a molecule called acetyl coenzyme A. This is done by the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase. So you've got your pyruvate right here, a three carbon molecule you're going to have your coenzyme A come in and also some NAD, the oxidized form. Pyruvate decarboxylase is going to chop off this carbon dioxide group right here. It's going to attach the coenzyme A to the acetyl group that's formed, acetate group that's formed, and in the process is going to reduce NAD to NADH. So now when you actually enter the cycle, you've got your acetyl coenzyme A and a molecule of what is called oxaloacetate. These are going to combine together to form the six carbon molecule citrate or citric acid, whatever you want to call it. The enzyme that does this is called citrate synthase. It's going to combine a mo uh, molecule of water and acetyl coenzyme A and oxaloacetate. It's going to kick off that coenzyme A, attach everything together, and then you've got citrate. And the reason this is called the TCA cycle, means tricarboxylic acid cycle, is because citrate has three carboxylic acid groups. You've got one right here, one right there, and then one right there. The next step is a two-part process in which citrate is reconfigured, moved like some of the th stuff is moved around, and you get this molecule called isocitrate. This is called an isomerization reaction. It is done by the enzyme aconitase. First off, citrate has a water removed. You've got the hydroxyl here on carbon 3, one of the hydrogens from carbon 5 coming off. It's going to form a double bond between carbon 3 and carbon 5 and then this water is going to be put back on except for instead of the hydroxyl group being on the third carbon the hydrogen being on the fifth carbon it's going to be the other way around so you've got the hydroxyl group here on the fifth carbon the hydrogen here on the third carbon to form isocitrate the next step is also a two-part process in which isocitrate is decarboxylated and oxidized into alpha ketoglutarate. This is all done by the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. So the first thing that's going to happen is isocitrate is going to be oxidized into oxalosuccinate. NAD is going to be reduced to NADH. So basically you're converting this alcohol into a ketone or a carbonyl group rather right here. And then the next step this carbon dioxide or this carboxylic acid group right here is going to be kicked off in the form of carbon dioxide so you're going from a six carbon molecule to a five carbon molecule uh, with the oxidized alcohol group right here on carbon four alpha ketoglutarate is going to be oxidized into a molecule called succinyl coenzyme A. It's also going to kick off another carbon dioxide in the process. This is done by the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So you're going to have this carboxylic acid group right here kicked off. It's going to attach the coenzyme A and in the process it's going to reduce NAD to NADH. In the next step, succinyl coenzyme A is going to be broken down to coenzyme A and succinate. 
This is an exergonic reaction, which means it's going to release energy, and this is going to drive the synthesis of ATADP to ATP. Actually, first it forms a molecule called GTP, and then GTP transfers its phosphate group to ADP, blah, 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 blah. But all you need to know is that during this step, ATP is formed. The molecule that does this is called succinyl coenzyme synthetase. So you've got your succinyl coenzyme A to succinate. Really all it's going to do is kick off this coenzyme A and form the carboxylic acid here. Succinate is then going to be oxidized to make what is called fumarate during the process it's going to reduce a molecule called Q, it, also known as quinol, or coenzyme Q. It's going to reduce that to QH2. Succinate dehydrogenase is just going to chop off two of these hydrogens right here to make a trans double bond, forming the molecule fumarate. The enzyme fumarase is going to combine water with fumarate to form the molecule malate. The hydroxyl group from water is going to attach to the second carbon. The hydrogen from water is going to attach to the third carbon. You see you got rid of that double bond there as well. And the last step is when malate is oxidized to form oxaloacetate. Again, it's going to reduce NAD to NADH by converting this alcohol or hydroxyl group, whatever you want to call it, into a carbonyl group here on the second carbon. So you've got malate to form oxaloacetate. And then the cycle gets to start all over again. So the overall procedure of the cycle produces three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, one ATP, and two carbon dioxides. But since you get two molecules of pyruvate after every, cyc or every cycle of glycolysis. Both of these things are going to go through, so you get a total of six NADH, two FADH2s, two ATPs, and four carbon dioxides from every molecule of glucose. But that is all I have for the citric acid cycle.